DS55, Magathy? Yes, sir. Hey, we're coming to make up to you. Okay. Um, close? Yep. Right, get some stuff on. Yep, I'll see you up in the bow. We're going to make up in the bow. Um, okay, where y'all taking us? 51. I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea and today we have to take a barge off the dock and although it looks really nice here it's pretty windy and uh, fortunately they gave me an assist which is a nice uh, luxury to have and uh, we got to come off the dock and then go through a bridge so we've just come through the bridge and now we're just waiting for the tankerman. I should have called the tankerman earlier. It's so cold, everyone has to put on their winter clothes. And uh, I was uh, busy doing other things and didn't call. And now we have to kind of wait for him to show up. So we'll wait for him to come, and we're going to make up alongside because the, because it's windy. We don't want to get in push gear because if you notice, the barge is drawn like two and a half feet in the bow. If I were in push gear, the wind would grab that bow. As big as this barge is, there'd be nothing I could do to stop it. Okay, so I see the tankerman coming. So that's a good sign for us. That means I'll go get in position. Now, I traditionally like to be made up a little bit further aft, but the guys on this bar, uh, tug like to get up, made up more towards the middle. So I'm of the school of thought that it's easier for one guy to adapt to four other guys' way of doing things than it is to have four other guys adapt to one guy's way. So not a problem. We can do it this way. But like I say, it's just not my... Uh, what I generally do. But having said that, this is a 4200. I'm work I'm not on my regular boat. I'm working on over because uh, the way times are now with uh, infection rates and stuff, we have uh, somebody called in sick and so they asked if I could work over and uh, it just worked out that uh, it's going to work out good for me to work over. So that's, that's what I'm doing and in doing that, I get to get back on a 4200. And uh, the 4200s have a lot more ass. I've talked about that in other videos. And so it's not quite as imperative as it is on the 3000s. I really like to get made up further further aft so I can, uh, so I have more directional control by getting the rudders farther back. But being, uh, being a much heavier tug and a lot more power I think we'll be fine alongside. And when, when you're further up like this, you also it handles the wind better too. So now we're what they're what I hope you're able to see that. What they're doing now is the deckhand is sending up what we call the toe strap. And uh, this is basically a big a big circle. It's a line that's spliced together. And uh, they should have it matched up with the barge. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, I gotta check with him to see if he's all set. Hey, do you are you good like that, or do you want? All right, all right no, let, let me uh, let, let me back up, and you can do that. Okay, so in this case, he uh, says that he wants to take in a little bit of slack by taking take, uh, taking the loop, and. Uh, bringing it around so that they uh, make the strap just a little bit shorter 
And like I say, because this isn't how I usually do it, I think it's uh, good to uh, listen to your uh, guy on deck who obviously seems to have done this before and knows what he's doing. So he says he wants to do it that way. That's the way I'm going to do it. All right. That's uh, secure there. So now we can come ahead and put up the bow line. So there have been other videos that I've explained what each line does here. So if you're interested in this, you can look at, uh, there's a video, I think it's called like different makeups or something like that. And I show uh, how, how we make up in different configurations. But basically that strap that we just put up, that's gonna be taking the load of us driving ahead. Now this bow line, It's tough when you're not with the crew. Seems like when you're with your own crew, you don't have to say anything. Everybody knows it's a corrugated dance, but uh, getting on another boat, you have to kind of figure their rhythms out. But anyway, um, the bow line is a crucial line because this is the line that's going to help us if there's ever a problem. This is the only line that will help us if we have to stop the barge or, or slow it down. By when you back up, all the pressure is going to go on this bow line. The other thing the bow line does is if we make a turn to the left or to the port, the, that will help out the, um, the bow line will take all that strain. Now the stern line that we put up is basically just, it's only there just to turn to the starboard. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to need a little bit more. Oh, Alright. Okay, so right now I have too much pinch. Talked about pinch in the other, I think last week's video or a couple weeks ago. And so this time I got too much going on. So he's going to readjust the strap and try to give me a little bit more. There we go. Now hopefully this won't be too much. <laughs> it's one extreme to the other. Okay, so to go over this again, the towing strap is just to go all the pressure going forward. The headline is to turn to the left and to stock or back. And the stern line that we have yet to put up only keeps the stern from popping out. Okay, so we had a little problem with the wireless mic. I had walked down to the doghouse, which is, if you look down this, you can see the deck, the O1 deck, the, you know, uh, walking back there. And then if you took a right, then the doghouse would be there to run the winch. So I had carried, oh, here's, here's me going right now. And you can see me walking down here. And I have the mic with me. The problem is that the distance and going through all the metal, and then of course the doghouse is made out of metal too, was enough to have the mic clip in and clip out and clip in and clip out. So that just wasn't going to work. So I've tried to do this little voiceover for you in the meantime. So we've got the towing strap alongside. We're driving into that. We've got the bow line uh, tight with the wheel hard over to port, which will drive the stern over to starboard. That's as much pinch as we have here, but I'm counting on after putting up the stern line, tightening that up, that I'll be able to suck some of that uh, pinch up and get the get it or have a real tight makeup. Now you see the uh, tankerman is throwing down a a hook line, even line, hook line, whatever you want to call it. He's got a hook on there. Um, what's another thing that I haven't told you about the 4200s is that 4200s have an amazing winch on it, especially the older ones. The newer ones have the same winch, but it doesn't seem like they have the same power. They have a smaller engine that runs them. But these old 4200s, and I say old, they're very new compared to most of the fleets around. But with this company, it seems like we have all these brand new boats. And uh, anyway, these ones that have been around for five or ten years, they have these massive six-cylinder John Deere engines that run these huge intercon winches. And this, and, and in, in the 4200's case, it's a double drum winch. So it's not like the winch that you see on the boat that I normally run. 
One side will have all the wire for towing, and the other side has wire as well, but it will have, uh, you know, this Amstel Blue uh, soft line on top of it, kind of like Kevlar stuff. And so we run that line out to them, and uh, what's really nice is that you don't have to break the push gear down or anything like that. You get it all set. The only thing you have to do is that, that what you can't see what's happening right now is that the deck hand is moving the chafing gear, which is stuff that protects the, um, you know, where the, the line comes around a metal piece to make a 90 degrees there. That it'll wear on the chafing gear and not, not wear on the Amstel Blue. And so you can see I just tightened it up there and it got all tight and now we've got a beautiful makeup and everything's looking good. And so that's about where I'm going to leave you and we'll turn the mic back on. All right, see ya. I, I don't even know yet. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know when we get there. Okay, sure. okay so now I just got to talk to my assist, Tug. On oh, the Pegasus, yeah, you got the right idea. I'm going to start moving upstairs, but you throw a line up there and uh, I'll be talking to you when I get upstairs. No, right where you're at there, you know, right behind the forward Yoki. Turn on the lights. It's daylight, but I like to put on our towing lights just so that everybody stays happy. Okay, and we're here. Check in with traffic. Traffic from the McAfee? McAfee traffic, go ahead. Good afternoon. Hey, we're up at uh, Shell Seawarm. Oh, excuse me. We're at Shell Newark. That's where we are. And we're made up alongside the light tank barge, Double Skin 59. And uh, we're made up alongside Heads and Tails. So we're uh, 400 by 13 deep draft on the tug. I'd like to get underway and head for our lay berth over at 51. Hey, you know what? I made a mistake. It's the double skin 55. It's the 55, and it's going to be 400 by 13. Our lay birth at birth 51. Very good, thank you. On the Pegasus, you got me on this one? Alright, looks like we got some action on the bridge. So, uh, I guess we can start taking things in. Uh, Chris, why don't you take things in and, uh, Pegasus and I will hold you right here. Alright. Alrighty, and I'm working about a quarter right Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we're northbound towards the GW. down and there's trains going across it so we're gonna have to wait. Lehigh Valley draw from the Magathy.
Hey Cap, I see that you have uh, some action on your bridge there. When you're ready, when you get done, can we get a lift from you to be outbound with a double skin 55 and the assist tug Pegasus? And this is the tug Magathy. The Magathy and Pegasus again. All right, when the train clears, you need a lift. That's all right. Very good, thank you. Sometimes I find that some of the bridge tenders are uh, sorely lot. But this particular guy awfully friendly today. Very nice. It's really cold out. And it's supposed to get down supposed to get down to single digits tomorrow or tonight. And uh makes me wonder why I didn't just go back to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm gonna have, uh, have to thaw out there. But uh anyway as cold as it is, none of us mind the cold as much as we mind the wind. And with January, it used to just be a times in the winter, but now it seems more often than not the wind is blowing more and more and more. There's a, regardless of your political stance, uh, whether a mariner will tell you that he believes that humans are part of climate change or not, very few mariners, I think, would tell you that there's no such thing as climate change, or if they do, they'll just say how, uh, yeah, there's no such thing as climate change, but it's a lot windier these years now than it was uh, 25, 30 years ago. We used to get wind back then, and then it would go away. Now it seems like we got wind all the time, which is the perfect time to own a sailboat. <laughs> Maybe not when it's single digits and freezing and snow. However, if it's going to be windy, not a great time to have a sailboat. So, if you're wondering what I'm getting at, for those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you get a chance, please run over to SV Paquita. That's my other channel where I have a sailboat that I sailed from New England all the way down to Puerto Rico. And uh, I'm there now and working through the bugs of the boat and learning the different things about it and becoming a more, you know, I spent my life on the water, but I haven't, uh, I'm not really a sailor. Uh, you know, I've sailed before, and, but uh, I think that to get good at anything you do, a major ingredient is time. And I just don't have as much time sailing as I'd like, especially because I have, uh, some might say delusions, I like to think of it as a dream of someday sailing around the world. And so, I figured this would be a fun channel to make, so those of you that have watched sailing channels might know that there's a million sailing channels out there, and it's usually dominated by the young and the beautiful, or the people that can afford things that most of us can't. But I'm just a lowly old tugboat guy that's uh, managed to navigate through two divorces and get two kids through school so I'm just a regular kind of guy if I can do it you can and uh, I bought a boat and uh, I'm using the skills that I have as a mariner to hopefully help me down the road but I still have to uh, get the years and the miles under the keel before I call myself a real sailor sailboat wise and, uh, if that sounds like uh, an interesting journey for you, I welcome you to come. I'll put a link in the description below. And maybe if I do this right, if I remember, I never remember to do this because these are recorded and then I put them up a long time later and I don't remember everything. Maybe I'll put a link up here if I can remember to do that. All right, so back to tugboats. It looks like we've got all of our lines in. Hey, Chris, do you have uh, one line that you can leave us, or is that going to be a, a problem? No, I can wrap this one right up here. I'd like a back in one if you don't mind. Have we moved it on the dock at all since you've been taking them in? No, we haven't. All right, now take them all in then. We're just going to wait a while for the train to get off the bridge. So uh, take them all in. Pegasus is doing an outstanding job holding us here. Okay, so if you wonder how we're being held up here while he's taking in the lines, um, my assist tug is at the top, so he's, he's pushing me this way. And 
I'm doing what I would call a full left twist. So my rudder is hard over to the left, my starboard engine is forward, my port engine is back. So I'm twisting, trying to twist the bow out and he's pushing the bow in. The two of those work together and cancel each other out and push the whole barge sideways. So we're getting a lot of force up against the dock which is keeping us from sliding forward or back. Which is exactly what we want to do. kind of funny I uh, I always get these comments people saying don't speed up your videos longer videos are better so I made it one a couple weeks ago that was like an hour and 15 minutes and it was pretty well received and everyone's like oh yeah we want longer videos let them run let the cameras run well here's part of the job nobody talks about we're up against the dock we're ready to go we can't go anywhere for one reason or another in this case it happens to be probably a couple miles worth of uh, freight train going across a bridge. So they can't open that bridge until that train's gone by. And I don't really know the whole workings of the train industry, but I would imagine you don't see them flying over this bridge, so I imagine there's some sort of speed limit to keep a rickety bridge up, or keep it from becoming rickety, maybe I should say. Chris, are we all gone? All the lines out. Okay, good deal. They're, they're, they're all, we're all gone, right? No lines out anymore, right? Yeah, all lines are in, yep. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> hey, um, just keep an eye on things. If you see us move, let me know, but I think we're going to be fine. Okay, yeah, let's come back on your stair and watch it. Excellent. So as we sit here and watch the hundreds of train cars go by, I can tell you that uh, it's an interesting thing going over to another boat. In other years, I used to work over quite often, and it was a regular thing for me. But since my divorce and since my uh, buying a sailboat, it turns out I found that uh, I don't like working over as much as I used to. <laughs> I haven't worked over in quite a while, so. Uh, there's a little bit of a, I don't want to say learning curve, but maybe an adjustment of getting on somebody else's boat. And then there's the whole watch thing that I'm over here as working in the place of a mate. And so uh, this would normally be the time that I'd be sleeping, but I'm up. And it's not so bad in the afternoon, but that also means that I start my watch at midnight and I'm up until six in the morning. That can be a little difficult. <laughs> But I, and not that I didn't have, I did it for years as a mate. I'm just kind of pre-programmed for years as a captain at the opposite watch. So that's a little different. But what makes it all worthwhile is there's a great captain over here. And uh, he's probably the youngest captain in our fleet. And he's been a captain here for a long, long time. And uh, he's phenomenal. Uh, everybody loves him. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a joy. I've been here almost not quite a week yet almost a week and it's just so nice when you work over with a crew that's welcoming and inviting and engaging you know that they don't just put you off in the corner and nobody talks to you and that sort of stuff you know so it's been fun over here so far except for the weather <laughs> okay so now it looks like the trains are stopped on the track so this could be a very long video. <laughs> Carry the Zim King Dow is inbound 28 buoys from Port Elizabeth. I should point out some differences between the 3000s and 4200. The reason why they call them 3000 4200 is that uh, the, the 3000 class has 3000 horsepower and these have 4200 horsepower. What's interesting is that uh, 
They're the same engines, they've just added four more cylinders to them. Uh, but, because they have so much more torque, the, the, gear, the, the reduction gear is much different, and the wheels are gigantic. And on these boats, they have what we call court nozzles. Years ago, I don't know about years ago, but when I first started the channel, I talked more about court nozzles, but I've been working on a, on a traditional tug without court nozzles, so I haven't been bringing it up. For those that are wondering, a quart nozzle is not like a tractor tug that has a Z drive that is independent. It's basically you have just a regular running gear with a propeller, but you have almost what is equivalent of an airplane wing that goes all the way around the propeller, and it's solid and it's fixed, and uh, it gives more lift all the way around. So you might say, well, why don't they put those on everything? Well, and with everything in life, there are trade-offs. There's benefits and, and, and things that, that are negatives. And so, pros and cons, I should say. So, um, with quart nozzles, they increase your thrust quite a bit. Um, I guess a regular propeller, you have water that's flying off in all directions. Um, and this really pushes all the, all the thrust that comes off of the propeller all in the same direction. So you can pull a lot more with them, but if you're only interested in speed and not pulling power, the added thing there adds a lot of drag. And in this case, there's two of them because there's one on each propeller. And uh, these propellers are massive. They're, uh, I think they're, they're eight or nine feet foot propellers here. I used, to, uh, I used to always be on 4200s until I came to work in the harbor. And, uh, when we go in the shipyard, it was always fun to take a picture of me standing in the court nozzle, and uh, you know, there's plenty of room for me in there, <laughs> you know, with the propeller. But uh, so another con for having court nozzles is that it really reduces your maneuverability. You're not quite as agile as an open wheel boat would be. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because so much of your thrust is vectored straight out, out behind you. Even if you put rudders on, still a lot of it's coming up. And you might look at that aft camera and you see the water coming off to the side. And that's good, but that's just showing you what you're seeing on the surface is just a small percentage of the water that's being moved, you know, 13 feet down. So, uh, anyway, there's the. the uh, radio there but anyway um, another thing that makes them less agile is if you're familiar with prop walk maybe you have a boat especially as this happens a lot with a lot of sailboat guys know this that if they have a regular what we call a right-handed wheel and the way they talk about right-handed or left-handed wheels is if the boat was out of water and you stood behind the boat and looked at it and the propeller turned to the right that would be a right-handed wheel turned to the left would be left and 95 percent all of them all of them out there that are single screw all turn to the right so it's very common that on a boat like a sailboat before you get way on when you start to back It'll start coming back, but it will also back to port. It'll start moving to port. And that's a direct result of what we call prop walk. And that's where the propeller is grabbing the bottom or the water underneath it and moving you, you know, with the torque of the propeller moving you off to the left. Um, well, when you have a quart nozzle, it's not grabbing anything underneath there. So it, it almost, uh, even when you back, you're still having vectored thrust. So much of the proc walk, if not all of it, has been uh, reduced or at least, or almost eliminated. So these are things that, that make uh, having nozzles, having quart nozzles different. You know, if you had have one boat with quart nozzles and the same boat, the same horsepower and one without it, the one without it is going to be a much more agile, much more handy boat to move around, and uh, that's great. But if you were towing these barges fully loaded, you'd probably tow them at a knot or two, or maybe even three knots faster with the quart nozzles. Um, they, they, they are good at what they're doing.
Okay, so now the train has almost, it's almost off, not quite, probably two thirds of the way off of the bridge and it's stopped. So that probably means that he can't go up. Uh, oh, it's starting to move again. They must have heard me. <laughs> there we go. So he's probably going to move, move all the way off the bridge before the bridge operator can start opening. this time. All right, as far as the bridge, as, as much bridge as I can see, the last train car has finally gone past my field of view, so that's a good sign. But I don't believe he could just yank the bridge up. I think that he has a protocol of a million different things he has to do to get before he can get clearance to. From we got Valley Journal, the magazine, the Pegasus. We're going up. Very good. Thank you, Cap. All right. All right, on the Pegasus. Let's do this. Uh, why don't you go all stop and give me a clutch on to a stern. Alright, so now what we're going to do is exactly the opposite of what we're doing. I'm setting my rudder all the way hard starboard, coming ahead on the port engine. Yeah, half the foot, third. Doing a, a left twist right now. He's going to start pulling the bow out. Right now the stern is coming out faster than the bow. I remember when I say the bow, it's whatever relationship is to the tug. So literally this the bow of the barge is behind me. Head on your stern. But the working bow. bow is what's ahead of the tug and that's all we really talk about. Very good, thank you. Can you get go through the bridge when it's open enough for us oh. to get under? 
but not the, they have a little green light or a white light that comes on depending on the bridge. And this one I actually came through here the other day and I think it's actually, uh, I think the, the light has been curved out because uh, the red light stopped. So, uh, so, so the theory is, look, if, if, if my wheelhouse, you know, if, if I have an air draft of 75 feet and the bridge opens to 125, when it gets to 100, can't I just go through? And I suppose you could, but, uh, when I worked in New Haven, I think I told you guys that I worked for a company in New Haven for 10 years, the Tomlinson Bridge there came down on a tug that was going through doing exactly that. The, the I guess when they get it in the up upright position there, they they lock it in place, and uh, it wasn't locked. Something went wrong, and it came down and uh, wiped out the tug and the bridge too. I think, and uh, so I think it was the Tomlinson. I could have that wrong, but anyway. So because of that. As much as it's hard to wait, I think it's a good idea to do so. So uh, I usually wait until uh, we get a full opening and go through, just not because we need all the the feet and height, but because we need the bridge locked. <laughs> Don't want that thing coming down on me. Now at this point, we could cut the Pegasus, our assist tug, we could cut them loose. And, uh, but the wind is blowing from right to left and it's blowing at a pretty good clip. It's not so much now, but when I came up here before it was 35 to 38. Right now it's just in the teens. And so uh, because the bridge could get st stuck at any moment, I don't want to be stuck out here blowing around with a huge 50, which is a great big sail, and me doing anything. So I figured, you know what, we paid him. And uh, when you hire an assist tug to help you, you usually get like a two hour minimum. And so we got him anyway, so I'm, I'm just gonna keep him where he can help me for the next, for the, you know, until we get through the bridge. Then once we get through the bridge, then we can let him go. All right, so the, one of the ways that I measure to see how high, uh, how much the bridge is up, if you look at the top, it can be confusing because of the rollers they have up there. But the counterweights go right down and just have a few feet off of the track. So I go and I look for the counterweights, and that tells me right now, right, right now the, the counterweights look like they're all the way down. So I'm going to start making my way over there. Anybody's wondering, we're doing 2.6 knots, but we're increasing right now. And if I had to guess, if that light was working, I think that light would go white or green, whatever it go goes on right now, because it, it, it is not moving anymore. I think it's locked. So now we're up to 4.2. you notice I'm not lined up perfectly with the bridge and I'm doing that on purpose because I have him there I'm gonna be coming around like that because the wind is blowing me all the all the time if I lined up straight I'd be crabbing down on the bridge so I want to make like a big arc with the apex of the arc being right underneath the bridge <laughs> at least that's my plan we'll see how well it works my poor deckhand up there is freezing to death and he has to stay there to let the uh, Pegasus go, so he probably doesn't like this idea as much as I do. Okay, we're doing 6.1 right now. 6.1 knots. Um, the makeup is good with him alongside. I'm carrying just about yeah, zero rudder to keep it straight, it. but I'm still trying to rotate a little bit to the right, like I said, to make this turn so that I get under the bridge right in the middle of my turn. Okay, we'll see you forward. Now what I like about going this speed is that I'm I'm basically about half of my throttles right now. That doesn't mean that that 
if I'm doing I'm doing six three, that doesn't mean that I could do twelve six if I if I put all the power to it. But what it does mean is that if I got into trouble, I have a lot more throttle to use to try to get me out of trouble. And so that's one of the things we try to do whenever we go through bridges, whether we have help or not, or the wind's blowing or not. We always try to keep a little bit in reserve. And I've talked about this before in other videos, like when we go through the gate, I like to hold a little back. Because remember, your wheels, as far as turning you and like, you know, doing a twist one way or the other, they're going to work a lot better at slow speeds than they are at high speeds. And it has to do with the difference between how fast the propeller can move water and how fast the water is moving. So in other words, if you're at a standstill and the propeller might be able to make water go, oh, I don't know, say... 15 knots because we can't do that but the the water that slips by is what what um, you know that's the that's the force that makes us go eight knots so I'm just guessing at 15 knots but at that 15 knots what's kind of cool about that is that uh, if the boat if the that you would have 15 knots of difference between still water and the boat but if you were doing 10 knots you'd only have five knots of difference between the water coming by the propeller and coming by the rudders and and the water that you're around so i don't know if that makes sense or not but that's uh i i know it works <laughs> all right so we're through we're gonna uh call the uh bridge now lehigh valley grog tug magathy we're all clear thank you very much for the opening cap Take care now. Mr. Roger, Kevin, it was just you, the magazine? Yes, that's correct. We're all the, we're all through. Everybody's through. That's Mr. Roger. Security, security, security. We have LB drop coming to a close. We have LB drop coming to a close. All right. All right, on the Pegasus, I just brought her back to clutch. You do what you need to, take in your line. Thank you so much for a great job. I'm thinking, God, I've been staring into the sun. I can't see what the clock says now. Stand by a second. Okay, how about uh, 1335 or 1400? Does that work for you? Thank you so much. You too, Cap. Great job. All right. Now I got to write in the log. Okay, so now we're, we're already feeling the effects of the wind since I've slowed down. The wind is blowing us over. So I got to pick up the speed again. I slowed down for him. How you doing, Chris? You a little cold? A little bit. <laughs> Alright, come on back, brother. Well, the Pegasus, you aren't right in the log, are you? Okay, good deal. <laughs> I saw you headed off that way. I was like, oh my god, he's probably got us back to the window. <laughs> ah, you're a gentleman. Thank you so much. Okay, so now I'm through the bridge. I gotta check in with traffic. Traffic from the Magathy? Checking in uh, south of the uh, Lehigh Valley Drop.
Okay, very good. I'm going to berth 51. Thank you so much.
Well, I guess that's the end of the video. <laughs> all right. Make sure so, you uh, get all the slack out of those whiskers. There isn't a whole lot to see here anyway. Besides, uh, you're probably only seeing a silhouette right now because of the bright light, the sun, and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing, commenting. Uh, all those things are awesome. Don't forget to check out SB Paquita. And uh, really appreciate all that you do. A special shout out to my Patron crew. Patrons are people who pay a couple dollars a month and help out the channel and they really fund the channel to keep things going so if uh you want to help out you can go over to patreon.com slash tim b and uh that'd be great to see you there if not no pressure it's all good thank you so much and as all you guys be safe stay healthy as always i see you on the one